Hi everyone, Assalamualaikum, Salam Ramadan dan Salam CMCO. Ah, uh, saya Shali Zulkifli. Ah, uh, welcome to our show today. Nak sembang apa tu? Okay. Uh, and today is our fourth episode, episode keempat kita uh, dan tajuk kita hari ni ialah uh, apa? cakap betul-betul lah, ok, uh, cakap betul-betul lah sebab com- it basically it's communication and communication is very important in everything that we do so today we will be talking about communication dan saya nak perkenalkan, ok, hari ni saya pula perkenalkan co-host saya, uh, Sharon Wee Sharon Wee Uh, yang juga uh, TV host personality uh, dan juga squash champion kita. Uh. Hi Sharon, how are you? Hi, hey, Sharon, good, good. You look again very, very fresh, happy je yeah. hari ni aku tengok. Okay tak? Okay tak intro I? I very good. Intro. Okay tak? Actually, Shali ni kita punya bincang. Of course, my uh-huh. background profile as TV sports personality kan memang dah biasa lah. Then, kita kata, yeah. eh Shali, why not today you take the lead today? Ah, so, <laughs> I suka pasal Shali ni dia take challenge very seriously. <laughs> yeah, so, anyway. yeah, so we are waiting for our viewers. Uh, a lot more yes. coming in. We Kita start lah eh, on time about uh, uh, one minute time. Yeah, tu kita ada satu dah. Muhammad Halim, Cik Muhammad Halim, our our apa avid follower Cik and Mel, hi Mel, hi Cik Muhammad Halim, hope you guys are having good a good day today so far. Okay, ah uh, so kita start ya Sharon. Okay, we can start in okay. like thirty seconds. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> Okay, so today yang, yang saya cakap tadi kita nak bincang pasal communication. Okay, as we know in everything that we do, communication is very important. Sebab sekarang kalau komunikasi kita tak betul, apa yang kita nak sampaikan tu tak sampai kepada pendengar atau uh, atau target audience kita. So sometimes because of communication breakdown, kita also ada persis perselisihan faham and all this. So that's why communication is very important uh, especially macam in sports also lah. So today kita nak, kita nak bincangkan the first uh, subject is why communication is so important in the sports system. Okay uh, Sharon, maybe you want to start us off dulu? I know Sarah you have idea. <laughs> Sarah, my co-host. Yeah. <laughs> Again, uh, I learn from the best. Uh. Yeah, thank you, thank you. To those yeah. yang uh, baru join kita, 2 o'clock, nak sembang apa tu, hari ni episod keempat lah. Cakap betul-betul lah. Uh, tu uh, topik kita yeah. hari ni. So, um, thanks Charlene. Sudah pasti a lot of us, communication is extremely important whether you are athlete or non-athlete. Because communication, whether it's by spoken or sign language, It's a sign to understand each other, greater communication and understanding, respect and also achieving goals together. Bayangkanlah kalau tak ada, we don't express ourselves to coach ke, to our parents ke, to sports officials, even to the loved one. Takkan nak macam ni, macam ni je. Kena lah express, I love you, you love me kan. So, it's that's why communication is so important, especially in sports. So I believe that specifically today kita nak bincang pasal uh, athletes communication bersama dengan coaches, parents, sports officials, even dengan media. Uh, media ni very important. Saya ni dalam posisi yang very, uh, in, uh, what, is, what you call that, very unique. I'm very grateful yes. because I was uh, elite athlete before and now I'm a TV host and also journalist. So I know... Um, you know, both last side. time, how, yes, yeah. both side, how I feel last time as an athlete and now as a journalist, it's like, oh, cakap <laughs> lah, betul-betul, buka mulut tu. <laughs> so that's how I feel lah, Charlene. True, true. Uh, well, for me juga, I I totally agree with you because macam, sometimes uh, I see a lot of incidents, especially macam, bila kita cakap about communication with coaches tadi kan, eh, cakap, bila kita go for high press situation, sometimes if you don't communicate well uh, or relay how we feel and what we think to our coaches, kadang-kadang dia susah nak nak read our body language because masa press situation, contohnya like in bowling like for me, like you have to strike 
to win contoh in the last uh, three games dekat KL 2017 tu kadang-kadang because of the miscue we will make uh, wrong decisions based on that so that's why bila in pressure situation sometimes even if you know apa you tahu tendency players you but you still have to make sure and ask them so that you're on the same page that's what one of my coaches last time saw cakap you must make sure you're on the same page even though you know uh, that other person well but you must make sure that it's spoken so you tahu both because you know lah macam macam kan when we uh, in pressure situation macam kena strike to win kena you know uh, uh, apa beat by one pin one point all these things it's not only your yourself or your sport is in macam in that situation dia macam satu negara macam you know uh, fate of satu negara Malaysia tu berada di tangan you because one goal will determine kat mana kita punya dalam posisi kita dalam medal tally so that's why it's important uh, for us to communicate well uh, especially during pressure situations like in sport Ya, yeah, I totally agree with you Sharlin. Macam saya pun sebagai um, former national number one, world number 18, I've seen a lot kan. Uh, since I was young, how I learn. I mean, everybody make mistakes and we learn. You know? So that's why exposure is so important. Sebab kalau kita kata janganlah jago kampung kan. So, but I really respect uh, all the sports organization, KBS, MSN, ISN, association, semua Uh, OCM yang memang banyak membantu para atlet lah dari segi confidence in communication and all. Uh, just to share, I myself uh, is penasihat pengurusan media, Akademi Kejulatihan Kebangsaan ISN. So it's my passion lah to uh, give feedback and all pasal komunikasi sukan dengan media ni. Dengan kawan baik lah, our former netballer yang sekarang ni ialah uh, Ketua Cawangan Kepakaran Kejulatihan, Nur Afzan Mahadi. Very passionate lady. Dia pun yes. kata, eh memang penting lah kita buat webinar, seminar pasal komunikasi uh, sukan dan juga media sukan ni. Sebab um, talking about communication back to coach kan. For me, it's all about trust. So kalau you dapat bercakap dengan coach, duduk in the same frequency and level. When you have trust, you achieve the goal together. Kalau tak memang susah lah. Kalau bergaduh je kan. Betul. Biasalah betul. Manis, betul. Kalau you, you, I tak suka you, you tak suka I then how? How hmm. you want to achieve that goal? Yeah. Yeah, I think when when it comes to the country, you have to push your, your all those things aside because whatever it is, bila kita compete, the country has to come first. You know, whether you like the other person. Kita kena professional lah. Bila kita masuk gelanggang tu, kita kena professional. Sama ada kita suka, tak suka, tolak tepi lu. Nak gaduh apa, lepas habis main, boleh gaduh. Masa main, have to focus, concentrate on the process and you kena buat and because you know, even when, I mean both of us know and, and I think some of our viewers pun know when they watch on TV kan. Kadang-kadang you tengok macam uh, Chong Wen pun smash, kita pun macam eh, okay, ah, ah, bola tanggung, smash. So macam kita pun invested in it. So macam can you imagine orang yang kat sana pun, kadang-kadang that's why macam contoh macam as an athlete communication like when you are in there, sometimes kita punya fokus tu is very narrow. We don't see the whole the whole broad uh, vision. So sometimes that's why we need a coach behind to just maybe remind us, okay, you know, uh, yang ni so sebab macam contoh pasal bowling, we have to see to the right and to the left with the mind tu, apa score our nearest competitor, semua tu. But then, as you said, like through exposure as well, uh, you'll be able to adapt with all the stimulus yang ada around you. Kalau you are thrown into the uh, hot water when you're not ready, banyak uh, athletes, especially I see lah uh, bowling, yang bila you tolak dia masuk terlalu cepat ke dalam those type of situation, dia akan crack and then susah untuk dia dapat confidence balik untuk dapat uh, apa mempamerkan prestasi yang baik di kejohanan-kejohanan. It takes them a long time to get back their confidence, to get back uh, apa all their game plan and everything here. Yeah, yeah um, to to share with aspiring athletes like athlete, athlete muda kat sana, of course, I ingat lagi tau sebab umur 10, 11 tahun, teenager time memang apa tu, emotional sangat kan? Bila coach kata, yeah. no, you do extra. Wah, muka dah tukar, kaki hentak here and there, nak tarik rambut. I'm sure you <laughs> dulu pernah kan? Yes, yes, yes. So, 
for me, I think very important to all the athletes, aspiring athletes, calm down because you must trust your coach, communicate with the coach. And this is vice versa, eh? to coach, coach juga lah. Jangan, sekarang it doesn't work. Eh? You you just tuding-tuding jari macam ni, sekarang budak-budak tak ikut sebab budak-budak dah mature, you know, they are outspoken. Yeah. So coach pun kena bertukar cara untuk, uh, apa tu, coach the athlete. I advise sit down and talk about it. Why am, am I not happy today? And uh, program, uh, bincang dengan coach-coach. Yang program ni saya rasa, you know, with my, apa tu, tak sesuai dengan my skill ke apa ke. I'm sure the coach will be open-minded lah. So, yeah, betul. yang tu kita harapkan lah. Sebab coach pun kena move forward kan. Yeah. Um, yeah, paling penting juga kepada elite athlete, this is when elite athletes are very mature athletes. So, mature athletes, high rank athlete pun ada dia punya hal jugalah because uh, sometimes, you know, elite athletes feel that, eh, hey, I know a lot of things, maybe uh, I'm okay. Tak payah advice daripada mana-mana. So, that is wrong. Please, you know, yeah. learning is continuous. I'm sure Charlene agree with me. Again, yeah. be open to get feedback, whether good or bad, then talk to the coach. Yeah. yeah. Because you learn something new every day. And then sometimes, like for me pun, I've gone through a lot of coaches. Like local coach, Mak Saleh, semua. So, macam, every coach has their own style. So, macam, uh, macam saya cakap tadi, kita kena adaptkan diri kita kepada diorang and diorang pun kena adaptkan diri kita. Uh, diorang kena adaptkan diri diorang kepada style kita. So, we meet somewhere in between. And I think that's very important jugalah. Uh, yeah, sebab yeah. kalau if we, kalau tak ada, susah lah. Susah nak, nak move on because Uh, at the end of the day, yang akan baling bola, yang akan smash, yang akan uh, swim the last lap when all those things is you. But you still need help, no matter how good you are. Because sometimes every, every like for me now, even though dah berapa puluh tahun, sometimes every day I learn something new. So you cannot be let your ego take over your, your, apa, cloud your thought especially during pressure situations because you have to know what your options are hmm. semua semua option yang ada so that you can make a more informed decision uh, so apa keputusan yang ambil tu tak terburu-buru yeah true true so um talking about coach and all i think it's both ways lah especially hmm. in the new yeah. era of sports i think it's very important to communicate with each other macam Charlene kalau nak express herself i love you to si abang Azid tu senang je dia ni kuat cakap and terus je straight to the point <laughs> tak ada <laughs> tak ada bila main lain bila ni macam macam hmm, okey sebab dah kenal aku tak sangat <laughs> Eh, romantic lah sikit. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, so anyway, uh, yeah, communication both ways is very important. That's um, coach and athlete. And obviously, athlete with parents and sports official, teammates also very important. Especially yes. kalau team event ke apa, macam football, bola jaring, semua. Of course, team event, hockey yeah. kan. That is so important. Then, macam squash. Um, quite individual punya sport but still when we go for team event we still need to get along and yes. think of the nation, Malaysia when you go Commonwealth Games, Olympics World Championship, Sea Games Asian Games because you go under Malaysian flag. So please get along. So what do you think Charlene yes. about communication dengan teammates especially? Yeah, as communication with teammates pun memang sangat penting especially like for uh, like when you play team events Uh, the smaller the number, lagi senang. The bigger the number, the size, lagi susah. Because, yelah, susah nak dapat semua, contoh, 13 orang sama kepala, 6 orang sama kepala. You will have things that you don't like about your teammate. That one is for sure because kita manusia, kan? Semua orang ada karakteristik dia sendiri. Tapi kita kena, macam saya cakap, yelah, kita kena professional. When we are competing, kita tolak ke tepi. You know, you know what will trigger your teammate. Sama ada buat dia marah, buat dia happy. Sebab kita dah train hari-hari kan sekali. So, daripada riak muka dia, riak wajah dia, uh, body language dia, kita dah tahu apa perasaan dia umur. So, daripada tu kita boleh uh, adjust kita punya kira feedback kepada dia secara positif. If you know they are down, uh, then you have to know macam uh, try and build it up. Uh, ada setengah tu macam dulu kita orang pernah Uh, in 
three I think uh, that time kita orang ada one Swedish coach uh, Matt Carlson dia baru join kita orang two weeks then he's the so far out of all the coaches that I had he's the one coach that actually interviewed us interviewed us before he started uh, coaching because dia baru masuk dua minggu then kita orang terus ada big uh, tournament world team cup and then world team cup tu dia jenis yang memang team event setiap satu player akan baling dua shot saja macam kalau normal ada events yang team events of six semua tu you main one game but this one lima orang akan main satu game so memang you kena ngam so he so far of all the coaches that I had he's the only one yang sit down with each and every one of us and interview us personally uh, apa yang you suka apa yang tak suka uh, so that he knows character kita and uh, he was one of the best because dalam dua minggu tu kita orang pergi uh, World Team Cup tu in Holland at the end of that tournament we won and both wow. men's and team menang um, yeah. men's and ladies team menang uh, and then uh, I think that's why I think you know benda tu macam mungkin kita tengok macam benda small matter Remy but then he really got got into us and we saw that oh coach ni memang betul you know invested in us, memang dia nak tahu lah kita macam mana so bila dah dah macam tu dia akan ada trust lah between the player and the coach and I want to share one more story masa at that same tournament juga normally ni about my husband lah I tak tahu dia dah cakap dengan orang lain tak lah uh, tapi ni rahsia kita lah siapa yang tengok ni lah episode 4 ni dia because my husband usually dia macam main happy-happy je dia tak lah macam uh, intense macam saya selalu jerit-jerit kan so masa tournament tu tiba-tiba masa kita tengah main dia selalu our coach uh, Max Carson tu dia selalu buat my husband marah dia masa cakap uh, kenapa dia ni asyik buat air marah tau tapi tapi he knew which point to press so that uh, boleh buat my husband tu uh, main lagi bagus so that's the type of coaches that we have to be for our player you know uh, might be different than other because every player dia different characteristic so kita kena sesuaikan diri kita dengan setiap player tu untuk um, kira naikkan dia full potential yep ya yeah, ya yeah. um, definitely because uh, besides coach uh, dengan teammate sometimes teammate tu macam adik beradik kita tidur makan semua yes everywhere we go Do- because we spend more time with the coach like our ayah angkat uh, mak angkat and the teammates like our adik beradik kan member member because uh, normally athletes, especially elite athletes yang tinggal dekat uh, Bukit Jalil, dekat Kasa, Hostel MSN tu semuanya memang tip-top, tip-top, uh, good food and all with ISN, MSN, I think uh, well done uh, to them actually to jaga our national yes. athletes but staying together, being a roommate, this is when communication is extremely important lah so that we care about each other feeling juga kan? Yes. Um, as teammates yeah, sometimes we get along with teammate A, tak berapa get along with team, teammate B. Tapi itu lumrah manusia lah. We have differences, but make sure why are we there together for our sports. I think it's very important. So we can see viewers. Uh, thank you very much uh, for being with yeah. us. Nak tumbang apa tu? Episode keempat. Cakap betul. We have Halim, Linio, Gary. We have Stephanie. Yeah. Wah, Stephanie ni gan Huawei ni. I actually huh. interviewed her masa uh, KL host, Malaysia host SEA Games 2017. That time, of course, as uh, wartawan for Astro Arena, interview dia. Hmm. Dia dengan teammate dia menang lah gold medal. Synchronized swimmers ni, dia menang gold medal semua, oh. interview dia. Dia dengan teammate Zilin tu, kiss I live on TV. Can you imagine? <laughs> That's the best. <laughs> it's like, da 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 point. Uh, <laughs> I think it's good. So, era HPP. Yes, yes. Live on TV. So, that is a good one, Steph and, and um, Zilin. Um, we have Daina Abdullah. We have Amzan here. We have Jason Desmond, very senior in our media, radio and also TV. Uh, we have uh, BC. BC is here as well. Our Otai in oh. Bali. Oh, yeah. hi to BC. Yeah. So to everybody, we are talking about communication and media yeah. com uh, for athletes and sports fraternity. If you have feedback, how do we improve on athletes' punya ability to speak better? Not necessarily in form of media, but in with teammates, with coaches, and all. Please 
uh, write your comment here so we can discuss with everybody. Yeah. yeah. And today, uh, mm. I think I saw one uh, comment quite interesting. Uh, uh, okay. Sharon, uh, from Jason. Ni. Okay. If uh, you can see, cakap, our, uh, okay, our athletes must, must see the need for it and want it. Otherwise, it won't work. I've pitched and tried, but no takers. Yes, they may be able to converse in our national language, but going international takes a different level of English. They are not prepared to slog for, and that's the biggest stumbling block. Wow, yeah. Wow, quite that's serious, a, eh? yeah, quite a straightforward. Deep. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think, um, yes, our athletes now, compared to maybe 20 years ago, of course, the ability to speak uh, BM, uh, English, and your mother tongue language, I think it's mm. very important. But specifically for international sports, I think it's good that if we are equipped to speak English fluently, if not basic, Again, yes. whether you like it or not, athletes being um, what you call interviewed by radio stations, TV stations and all in Olympics, Commonwealth Games dan sebagainya. So there's a responsibility to speak professionally in front of TV as well because you are seen all over the world and you represent the sport and our nation, Malaysia. So how you yes, speak... Exactly how um you know the way the content you of be. yeah your content of what you say also your body posture and all tells who you are and where you are from correct correct uh betul like um i think uh i've seen a few of our uh, juniors also uh who had a lot of talent very promising tapi they were not able to adapt to international uh, punya coaching system level because of uh, language language breakdown so um, this actually does happen so that's why as an athlete juga you kena apa uh, be responsible because you know you want to succeed at the highest level kan so what do you need to do to be there one of it is communication language because Normally, when you're an elite athlete, most of the time, your coaches will be foreigners. So, if you want, you cannot uh, blame the coach for not understanding you if you don't meet him in the middle and also learn how to speak. Because, contoh, like for bowling also, most of our manuals, coach, coaches, all the materials, mostly is in English. So, if you don't, uh, are not able to, um, command have a good command of english susah nanti you kena ketinggalan sebab nak translate semua word by word it takes a long time so it's a lot easier for you to learn the language than to harapkan interpreter sahaja yep uh, we have one yeah. comment here very good thank you very much gita jali i think counter back from her a little bit hi all i don't believe all international athletes need to be able to speak perfect english in most in most international sports event, it's almost always possible to find interpreters. And I've realized that when athletes speak in their native language, they are able to express themselves better. So, what do you think, Kalim? I think um, because actually, from my experience, uh, yeah, MSN and ISN actually did a, a media course for us. And actually, one of the one of the seminars was you, right? Remember, you did it for us, and you told us like, okay, what are the points that you need to talk about? How to answer questions and everything. And I think uh, coming back to what uh, Gita, right? Gita was saying is like, I would agree if you have uh, really no confidence in speaking English because you feel that you know you uh, don't command the language well, and if there's an interpreter. And they, much um, you know, you need to be comfortable. You need to have the confidence, like Sharon said. Everything that comes out from your mouth, your body language, uh, the way you answer, uh, carries a lot of weight to the country, to the sport, to yourself, to your sponsors. So if there is an interpreter and you feel more confident uh, of speaking in your own language, like BM Chinese or whatever, use it. But if there's no, but you still have to prepare yourself when there's no interpreter because not every tournament that you go to, there will be an interpreter. You know, only big games, probably like Asian Games, Sea Games, 
games and all all those big uh, major games there is but like for world championships and all those maybe not every sport has an interpreter so no matter what you still have to equip yourself with that knowledge i mean knowledge tak rugi kan like it's an asset to you i think yeah, uh, let me add in a little bit. I mean, everybody has their own perspective and we welcome that. You know, nothing is wrong. Everybody has their own feedback and comments. But me personally, and I believe Charlene as well, going around the world for me 20 years represent Malaysia. Charlene still now, 30 years representing Malaysia. There are not many tournaments or events that have translator. And I think I believe as Malaysian who has our... Uh, education system who really teach us English as a uh, very important language. I think it's very important for athletes, whether they are young athlete or elite athlete, to somehow have basic English. It doesn't matter you don't speak perfect English. Nobody is perfect. But yeah. with a little bit of basic English, I think it comes as uh, handy when you go all around the world, when the interviewer comes to you. And you can speak straight to the point. Um, and I think with uh, different languages that you have, I think it gives a lot of confidence to the athlete themselves. I think that's uh, my point uh, for here. Lah. Yeah, I so, think I want hmm. to add a, a bit more, Sharon, to what you're saying. I think uh, if, you, if there's no interpreter and you feel that you want to speak English, keep it simple. Keep it simple so that that it's easy for you to express yourself, then then you get through the interview fine. Yeah. yeah. So I am so happy. Me and Charlene are so happy. Guys, let's read this comment. Wow, it's an honor for me and Charlene. Our Olympian. Wow. Hey, Pandalena. Hi, Pandalena. <laughs> Reno. Hi. She said, hello, ladies. Cheers to another interesting topic to watch and ponder. Yes. Um, Panda Leila, obviously, our uh, role model. She actually is the first female Malaysian athlete that won a medal in Olympic. And recently, the, uh, before this 2016, she won silver medalist in, in synchro with uh, Chong Jun Hong. And before that, 2012, she won bronze medal. So, and She's here with us. Thank you, Panda Leila. <laughs> she actually uh, for watching. Yes, uh, kept in touch with me and said congratulations to Charlene and I. Thank you very much for having this show. Nak Simbang Apa Tu. She actually followed our past previous three episodes. Number one, which is continuous learning. Number two, uh, it's about Apa Tu? Um, number two and number three. Number two is number my three. childhood. Yes, my sporting childhood. Yeah. Kena nak ada show ni, Sharon. Empat episode. <laughs> uh, kita tengah belajar juga. Don't worry. Itulah, <laughs> itulah. Con continuous learning. Eh. And number three is fame. And today, our yes, fourth fame. episode is all about apa tu cakap betul-betul lah. So, Pandalela, thank you very much. It shows that. And she yes. even said that when she watched our three episodes before this, she got quite emotional and she was in tears because what me and Charlene shared actually connect to her and she was very emotional and she could feel it as well. So everybody, I think if Olympian watch our Nak Sembang Apa Tu, I think everybody should continue watching. Lah. Thanks, Panda Leila. <laughs> Thank you very much. And all very Thanks, best Leila. in preparation for Olympics. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. So uh, kita teruskan, uh, Charlene. I think um, in okay. brief, kan, kita dah cakap pasal communication with... Um, Coach, parents. Oh, parents and sports officials. Yes, yes. I think uh, parent actually semua uh, communication with parents, sports officials, semua pun penting. But I think uh, parents salah satu topik yang memang penting because, you know, when you're competing, sometimes um, parents memain memainkan peranan yang penting bagi athlete itu because Apa yang parents dia cakap kadang, whether negative or positive, dia memang akan terus uh, diserap oleh athlete tu. So, it's very important for parents to know what to say and what not to say. Uh, because uh, through coaching, I had the experience, like macam-macam experience lah, which is quite fun. But at that time, you macam, alamak, kenapa jadi-jadi ni? But now, thinking thinking back, 
through all the experience that I had. It's quite fun. Tapi you, you can see just by one word, or kan? Parents tak macam cakap apa pun. Riak muka wajah parents tu bila asid tu pusing belakang and tengok terus boleh buat asid tu down atau confident. So actually it's something that we should look into uh, because uh, if we see now a lot of macam sport, psych- sport psychology for athletes for for uh, officials but we don't we don't really touch about parents sports how to be a sports parent or sports parenting. I think that is a topic that you know we should uh, really look into um, because, uh, for example, at the beginning of my career, my parents had a conflict with my coach because my parents, my dad thought I should be trained this way and my coach thought I should be trained that way. So at one point, actually, after I won uh, Hiroshima Asian Games, my first goal, uh, actually. My par- uh, my coach tak kasi I talk to my parents because he was afraid that you know um uh, I would feel down or negative and but then you as seorang anak mesti macam you will want to talk to your family and so I think that's one aspect that we should really focus on also sports parenting once uh we reach a higher level uh, we should give seminars on sports parenting as well because banyak banyak athlete yang I tengok just because uh, some words yang diutarakan oleh ibu bapa mereka terus tak boleh main and then the whole thing down and then it not only like macam sekali lah not only affects them or the sport but also the country in the end because every single medal every single pin every single point counts so it's important to have a really good support system around us uh, lepas habis you nak marah ke apa boleh but during competition you should all be positive and be constructive criticism bukan macam too hard on the athlete because you know when you're competing sometimes you tak boleh sometimes kita panic so kita tak boleh nak go out of that zone so we have to find a way to still achieve the target without uh, having a mental breakdown yep um, def- definitely i think support system is very important especially young athletes they can't make decision because they're still young and parents is the one that control uh, the decision of their life especially in sports tidur pukul berapa makan apa kan but like you said i think parents also communication is important vice versa lah i mean both ways parents to athlete athlete to parents as well to make sure that um, everybody go towards the same goal but very important in my experience interact with sports officials i think it's very important sebenarnya sports officials ni lots of them doing it voluntarily secara sukarelawan yeah. they follow us to junior circuit they follow us to big tournaments and all this yeah sometimes they get allowance which uh, they deserve it you know they took time off they take unpaid leave from their job and all these things So my experience with sports officials, for example, apa tu managers, dia macam uh, mak mak ayah kita lah, mak ayah angkat lah. Wherever we go, dia kata, okay everybody makan time, okay everybody uh, warm up time. <laughs> you see? Sebab coach pun work together with us, tapi coach kena tengok match ni, match ni. So it's very important um to to communicate with sports manager especially uh, sports officials yang memang put their time to help uh, the athletes as well sports officials also including referees empire and all this i think communication is very important uh, it's all about being respectful lah sportsmanship yeah. kan which we going to talk yeah. about because our one of our viewer halim Um, last week actually they proposed to talk about athlete and sportsmanship which we are going to talk about um, being communicate with the support system i think that is the key for the success of the athlete themselves of course the limelight is all about the athlete tapi without good communication from everybody it's quite susah lah so this is something yeah. that I think athlete, coaches, parents, sports officials has to work together. Yeah, yeah, I think we have to acknowledge everybody's part in an athlete success and not just, you know, um, the athlete sahaja. Yeah, a- athlete puts themselves there. But then sometimes before the athlete becomes a champion, there's all these people behind them that 
push them in the right direction that gave the right support so that they can be there and i think mm -hmm. as an athlete once you acknowledge and appreciate all the efforts all the uh, you know sacrifices that that's uh, been given to you by your support system i think uh, it will make the journey a lot easier yeah yeah true we have our um synchro swimmer here Steph Gan Huawei, she agreed. She said, yes, yes, agree. Parents play an important role in sports. Parents should choose their words wisely so that it will boost uh, the confidence in athletes instead of bringing them down. So this is, um, I'm sure Steph is a very outspoken person also. That, that's what I said. Nowadays, this era, athlete muda-muda ni, they are quite outspoken. They speak their mind, which is very good. And coaches, parents, the adults, eh, I think have to move along, move forward as well, as well, to be open to listen to athletes who are very outspoken, but respectfully. Lah. I think that's very important. Yes. Yes. That's yeah. the key word, respectfully. Correct. So, uh, Charlene, kita dah bersembang yes. uh, pasal apa tu uh, communication athletes okay. dengan parents, coach, teammates, sports officials semua. One very, very important thing about communication, especially in this new era of sports, is media communication. Whether you yes. like it or not, in this new world of sports, media is very important because they actually covers and put the messages out there, whether TV, magazine, even social media. And I think our Malaysian athletes as well has been exposed to a lot of interviews, especially from media like Astro Arena, our top um, sports media channel, TV3, RTM, Bernama, and many more. Mm. And I see that our athletes has improved in terms, in terms of skill, um, speaking to the media, but not all. There are more actually need to improve. Banyak lagi yang perlu dipertingkat, kan? So, Charlene, eh, I must say, is our role model lah. Sebab professionally, she handled media very, very well. So, why so, Charlene? Terharu, terharu. Thank you, thank you, Sharon. Um, I, probably because of my was in media. My mom used to work for TV for more than 10 years. So, uh, nak ke tak nak, uh, uh, after, after every interview, dia akan buat post-mortem. Oh, you kena check ni, what you did right, what you did wrong, what you can do better. So, memang telah dilatih daripada muda <laughs> untuk untuk cara, saya, cara nak jawab soalan media and then I also watch a lot of like as you know, I like to read sports biography. So in those biographies, uh, the athletes also express how they approach the media, how they approach the pressure coming from the media. So um, I gain my knowledge through all these different uh, means uh, that help me to be able to be a better uh, sports personality and how, and how I am able to interpret my thoughts in my words. Yeah. So, yeah. macam tu lah, training macam tu lah, lebih kurang. Tapi, I still make mistakes. Until now, I still make mistakes. And I have friends that point out, you know, okay, eh, patutnya ni, oh. then when, or sometimes I, when I look back at my interviews, like, yeah lah, I, I should have said that, no, I did this wrong, I, I can do. So, you have to like, like everything else in life, we have to like be uh, open to improvement, be open because we're not perfect all the time. So, yeah. Yeah, true. I myself, again, I'm in a unique position, former elite athletes and now as a journalist and also TV host. So I see both sides. So it's very important, you know, for me to give feedback um, as well, the importance of media communication. Because media out there, no matter which channel they are from, their job is to convey messages and interview from the athlete or sports community community to the public and that's their job actually yeah i agree there are reasonable stories and unreasonable one but it's up to the athletes actually to adjust themselves emotionally as well and what to say and what not to say and from my experience when i was an athlete one of the biggest reason why i'm very comfortable in media uh, maybe because 
naturally me myself my own character you know i i'm outspoken confident to speak to the media speak to other people and also me being abroad berpangkalan di Amsterdam di Antwerp for very long during my professional squash career about 10 years and i've seen a lot of athletes there i tengok tengok wow for example world championship ah bila media datang cucuk dia orang je wow tengok dia punya shoulder up cara dia bercakap mm. dengan tangan so i duduk i like fantastic lah all these athletes so that is where i learn because of exposure you need to learn as yeah. well not just yourself but then to look at how good example how people handle media and all this and secondly as Betul. journalists and also wartawan lah tv host i also see our malaysian athletes actually banyak yang perlu dipertingkatkan skill komunikasi mereka sebab dari apa yang nak cakap apa yang tak boleh cakap dari penampilan diri how do you dress up if you wear slipper in big tournaments and go for media interview i think that's a no no because you represent yourself and you represent the country and um the way you speak as well whether you smile your nada suara your tone of talking plays an important part i know this is a small small thing bayangkanlah you baru yes. menang katakan go medal world open then orang kata how do you feel um okay lah i think i did my best tak boleh lah you kena um you know i am so happy and proud to represent malaysia this is my first world championship gold medal and i think i'll go further from here something like that lah yeah yeah i think actually probably some of them they are also scared of like some of the malaysian athletes they are also scared of uh, being seen as too over confident sometimes ialah kita punya culture kadang-kadang kita macam very timid oh, tak apalah saya macam low profile you know but compared to uh, westerners like some of my other friends from the states from from australia they were they are confident in their stuff sometimes too too over confident pun ada juga so kita kena be in in between balance you know you want to be seen as someone yang is approachable by the media by the ethics and someone relatable so that orang yang tengok peminat kita tengok oh macam bila kita kita terangkan sesuatu tu macam dia boleh cakap oh you know mula-mula uh, dia ada ups and downs lah kira macam story ada back story semualah eh. dia cakap oh sebab mula saya susah tak dapat ni dan lepas tu saya dapat line lepas tu saya dapat pamerkan uh, apa game yang lebih tinggi dari apa game ketiga game empat so macam dia build up the excitement so bila bila audience tengok tu pun dia macam oh ya yeah. dia macam oh macam dia punya interest pun dah kita dah dapat tangkap dia punya interest correct so, correct Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Tapi uh, I should say that our athletes now are much better now because uh, there yeah. are consistency lah. Ramai uh, community media kita, wartawan semua selalu interview para athletes kan. But this is when yang tu kebanyakan di interview ialah elite athletes. Tapi yang muda-muda tu kita kena start muda ni. Jangan sampai dah 20-30 tahun yeah. baru nak uh, train them. So For example, atlet-atlet yang uh, atlet elite yang sekarang ni di university, for example, in university sports program, or even sukma athletes, I think it's good time to start with media communication seminar with them, get good guidance, yes. maybe ex-athlete or you know uh, journalists and all to come together to give them uh, some guidance. I think it's important. And now me and Charlene is doing it lah. We are sharing, kan? Yeah. The, as much yeah. as we can. So, but since you train them from as young as 10 years old until maybe even during their teenager time, 13, 14 tahun, 15 tahun, that is the best age to train them. How do you speak professionally? Whether dalam bahasa Melayu ataupun bahasa English doesn't matter. But benda-benda ni bila um, dipercakapkan kepada media, then again they get confidence and it looks good for the state for the persatuan sukan for the yeah. sport and of course uh, for the nation as well and bila bercakap tu pun one important thing kalau athlete you you notice that athlete yang boleh bercakap professionally and confident the commercial value is up there sponsored masuk 
orang suka kat yes. social media lebih ramai yang like and that is all about commercial value whether you like it or not yes correct um that's why i think that's why we should also macam cakap tadi lah emphasize more on this also because at the end of the day macam kadang kita as a uh, sports national sports organization kan susah uh, kita because i'm in that also right now susah nak check sponsors so this is one of the ways that you can help yourself to train your athletes how to answer macam i believe uh, last time kalau untuk sea games punya last phase camp tak silap uh, pernah uh, MSN and ISN jemput wartawan i think Tony Maradas bagi a seminar okay kalau kalau apa kalau wartawan tanya ni macam mana you patut jawab kalau ni macam ni patut jawab so i think that's one of the one of good one of the good efforts that that's been done and i think we should go down further macam Sharon cakap tadi in Sukma so Sukma is one of the platform untuk athlete-athlete muda ni menyinar and dari situlah kalau kita boleh kembangkan minat, kembangkan bakat yang cara nak jawab betul then you can see uh, them uh, bila dia dah 15-16 macam saya cakap dia dah mecut, dia dah macam okay tanyalah soalan apa pun, boleh jawabnya ha, macam tu lah yes. Macam Sukma, for example, uh, next year ditunda lah, postpone to, supposed to be this year, tapi ditunda to next year in Johor. So all the very best are uh, Johor, <coughs> negeri Johor, uh, obviously, you know, are well prepared and all. And I hope that they'll have a program for their athletes as well. As Tuan Rumah, I think all the medias will go and surround them yeah. and ask about their feedback and all, kan? I think it's a good start. I agree with you. So, I have uh, feedback daripada wartawan dan sebagainya tentang atlet kita terutama melalui media communication. This is a good friend of mine, Ahmad Shahrazad Sani, wartawan Aswarina. His feedback, dia kata skill berinteraksi dengan media semakin baik dibanding 10 tahun lalu lah untuk atlet kita. That is good. Frekuensi media buat liputan sukan dan menemurama atlet semakin banyak. So that's what I said. I think it's good. All the TV station, especially their sports segment, eh, they turun padang, uh, expose uh, to the athletes with media interview and all, press conference, uh, before and after matches, they are the interviews, and even being invited to uh, TV program and radio. So I think it's a good exposure for our athletes. lah. They juga bagi pendapat Squash and bowling naturally tiada masalah atlet dia untuk melalui interview. <laughs> so wow, that's kembang. It. Yes, kembang. <laughs> that's his feedback lah. Dia pun suka dengan generasi yeah. baru muda atlet yang berani menyuarakan pendirian dan pendapat. So that's a little bit from Ahmad, wartawan dari Aswarina. Thanks Ahmad. Um, you are one of my role model. Um, Reporter, thanks very much. Satu lagi reporter The Star Sport, Lim Teck Huat, uh, senior reporters in Malaysia for sports. He said, only handful can speak well. If you speak better, it's good for athlete, the sport and the nation as well. So in new era, promoting your sport yourself, it's commercial value and be relevant to the sports world whether you like it or not. I think that's the reality lah. So yeah. for example, like what we do now, eh, Charlene, uh, what we do now as co-host of Nak Sembang Apa Tu, this is, we do it because we are comfortable speaking in communication, uh, sharing our ideas. So that's why uh, to all the viewers, for the viewers semua, I did say to Charlene lah personally, if you don't mind, I share Charlene. I said, Charlene, for us, of course, as elite athlete, and our journey in sports makes us very unique. That's our X factor compared to general public. That's one level up. But the way we present ourselves, for example, in terms of communication and professionally speaking to the media and transferring our knowledge and our experience to others, it makes us different from other group of athletes as well. So I think I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of you as well. Being an athlete is not just being an athlete. There are more things that I think we need to equip ourselves. For example, communication to put you up there 
more unique than others. I think that's the way it is. That's how I feel. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, because I um I think I mentioned this in the first show. So I read I think Deepak Chopra or someone one of the books that I read he said out of everyone there'll be only five percent that will be elite athletes. The, the out of ninety hundred, only five percent will be the next Nicole David, the next uh Dato Li Chong Wei. You know, so what are you going to do to be in that five percent? So because I I malu but that's how you learn you know like sharing the cup now we have astro astro arena all those uh sports channels that that are letting you practice but then kita practice online you know we have to practice our timing our tempo when we get interviewed we practice also so practice makes perfect we have to practice on the lanes and off the lanes and also yep. um it's very important about we are also ambassadors so kita ambassador to uh to the country Bila orang tengok kita, cakap, oh, oh, baguslah budak Malaysia ni. Baguslah budak tu dari Malaysia, that Asian girl dari Malaysia. What, no? Dia tak cakap nama you. Orang akan tengok you, your country. Your, they will mention your country first before your name. You know? Yeah. So those are the things that kita kena titik beratkan, I think. And I think like, Sharon, I mean like, nak cakap uh, semua teruk tak juga. Like, we can see our success stories from all the athletes yang now uh tv host personalities you uh apa fateha jinas you know you carry and conduct yourself well confidently with all the training sama juga macam kita training online uh, you also had to go through training as a tv host as a tv personality tapi itulah macam masa we were training tu memanglah kita tak perfect tapi later on as you get experience and ex- and more experience you become better like like now yeah, specific, specifically for athletes, uh, whether you're an athlete or former athletes, I think uh, it's key, lah, uh, ability to speak well and confident. It's also a uh, career. It can be your career as well. For example, like what I do now as TV sports personality, and now Charlene is doing with me, co-host a webinar, you know, nak sembang apa tu. And maybe one day after your athlete's career life after sports, this is the path that you want to go. Menjadi wartawan, journalist dan sebagainya. Jadi yeah. komunikasi itu very important. Or become a marketing manager. I think all that are career opportunity after sports. And talking about life after sports, this is one of our biggest topic in the future episode. So stay tuned with us. We'll share with you which episode that we are going to talk life after sports. Uh, I feel that it's memang important topic because it's all about career and life of the, of the athlete uh, themselves. Yeah. Um, again, Charlene, kita dah bercakap panjang juga kan pasal communication ni. <laughs> Yes. So, seperti biasa. Seperti biasa. so we talk about communication dengan parents, coach, teammates, sports official tadi termasuklah media komunikasi Saya rasa untuk community media, reporters, TV station dan sebagainya Tujuan mereka untuk interview dan untuk report the stories adalah untuk membantu athlete themselves dan juga sports community sebenarnya Biasalah kan Macam I kata tadi, ada story yang sedap didengar, tak sedap didengar but their aim is to support the athlete themselves and sports community again and it's up to the athlete to adjust themselves and also be professional about it. Again, ramai yang kata athletes zaman sekarang ni, they are very outspoken and they have their uh, mind that they want to speak about. I think that's fine. I think they should because you yes. need to brave athlete as well. Jangan dibully pula kan. You have to betul, speak betul. have in mind but the goal word is respectfully lah. Hmm. Yes, I think you have once you respect, you will be respected. You know, it's something respect is something that you have to gain. People see you then they say, oh okay. Macam contoh boleh masuk to compete, kan? Uh, from all that you've won, from all your exposure, you masuk je orang cakap, oh ada aura champion lah. Aura tu is, is how you carry yourself. Sometimes dalam diri you, you takut. Takut, tak confident. Tapi bila you masuk dalam gelang-gelang tu, muka you macam confident, you know? Those yeah. kind of things. So, benda-benda tu penting. 
apa dalam diri kita, kita biar kita yang tahu atau those close to us yang tahu. Tapi bila kat luar tu, you kena confident because it's not like everything else, like when you compete also, your opponents will see that and will attack. Hmm. Like for example, um, contoh macam, macam ada kawan saya kan, ada a few of them like uh, Puan Siti Fatimah, Natasha, uh, some other teammates, Bilian semua and uh, Yoke. Uh, I know him, one of my friends, dia kata, oh, Charlie nampak je garang tapi baik orangnya. Because those who know me, those who know me, know how I am off the list. Because when I'm competing, I have to be serious. Sebab, you know, kalau kita tengok atlet pun yang tengah compete, dia tak serious. Mesti, kalau penonton suka, mesti, apa ni tak serious, you know? Buang duit kerajaan lah, saya bayar tax semua. Kan? That is normal. But when they see you, put, kita, apa, bagi seluruh tenaga, passion tu semua yang tapi kita kalah, they are fine with that. I think most of them are fine with that but because they can see the effort yang kita letak right. kat situ. But yeah. once dia nampak macam ambil sambil lewa, ah, okey lah, ha, ha, macam tu, mesti dia marah. So dia tahu, eh, you dah, kerajaan dah pergi bagi exposure semua, you know, you main macam tu, you main main, you know, at that level of competition. So once, sometimes, We as athletes, we have to understand that also. Sometimes bukan bukan saja dia nak nak hentam kita ke apa, tapi dia orang pun rasa macam sebahagian daripada kita. So bila kita kalah, dia orang pun sedih. Bila kita menang, dia pun happy. Ah, uh, so we share everything together and it's very vulnerable. Macam yang cakap tadi, kadang-kadang sebab macam kita dah bedahkan diri kita pada seluruh dunia. You know, orang nampak benda you buat, buat baik, orang nampak benda you buat salah. So it's up to you how you handle it. Uh. Yeah, yeah, true. That's why communication is so important. Whether communicate with uh, the support system, ataupun appear on TV, ataupun radio, because there's a responsibility for yourself, for family, and the nation as well. So itu tentang komunikasi bersama dengan atlet dan juga support system. Kita juga nak bincangkan pasal uh, viewers punya. Um, opinion eh, topik, topik yeah. yang dibincangkan yeah. ni dari Halim. Halim, um, of course, our sports bodybuilder, president of uh, bodybuilding of uh, Pahang and he has been uh, very, very supportive of our show. Thank you very yeah. much, Halim. Yeah. Dia Thank nak you. kita bincangkan pasal athlete and sportsmanship. Wow. When you talk about sportsmanship ni, memang it has to be together dengan athlete. So I feel that sportsmanship is all about being fair, being a generous behavior, how you treat others, and it also tells who you are as a person. Your attitude if yeah. you are sporty. Orang in layman, layman word orang kata gentleman lah. Ah, so yes. gentleman. sportsmanship. Uh, I think kalau kita betul-betul tengok balik pun, like macam uh, if you go back tengok ni eh, Olympic values sportsmanship is one of them juga you know, uh, how far will we go to win, so that's a very important question juga, I mean you sanggup ke macam tolak tepi you know, sportsmanship and all that just to win that gold medal, I don't think that's a good thing because, yeah, bila you menang, you're the champion for that one competition, yeah, everybody will like you but once you are a loser everybody will try and step on you you know, there you have to think of the bigger picture Um, because you're not going to win all the time, you know, you're not going to win all the time, try and put yourself in the other person's shoe, okay, cuba kita fikir macam mana dia rasa, you know, would you like to be uh, orang tu buat benda sama kepada you, tak kan, so macam it's, it's, a, it's a form of respect, You not only for yourself or your opponent but also for the game, you know, if you don't, uh, if you're not fair, doing fair play, you, you that means you're also not respecting the game that you love, So that is, for me, memang a no-no lah. Uh, because yeah. that's why sportsmanship is important. Betul, betul. Uh, sportsmanship juga, of course, people look at you who you are lah as a person, kan? Not just as a sports person. Mm. Kalau you um, gentleman, kalau you rasa rule tu, you dah break that rule, you say, yes, that's true. Kalau main badminton tu, dah out, cakap lah out. Jangan kata, no, 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 it's in. Yes. <laughs> Kan? Dan orang nampak orang dah tak suka dah. Yang paling penting juga sportsmanship ni, it creates teamwork among uh, teammates and you understand each other and also to teach, especially the young athletes, eh, to win and to lose with dignity. And it's yes. good to start young. 
Kalau kalah, okay, kalah. But then work hard so that you can yeah. win the next time. Kalau menang, of course, be respectful and humble and work much harder. So this is when sportsmanship yeah. comes in. And it's a life lesson because I think sportsmanship ni bukan setakat masa you main bola ke apa ke. It's forever in life. Yes, betul. Betul. Mm. Um, I think macam, because I've seen also some macam dari muda-muda eh, as a support system also, kita kena encourage them to do the right thing. But sometimes I see, uh, unfortunately during Sukma and all those big games, they are encouraged to cheat. You know, oh tak apalah, tak ada orang nampak, you know. No, it's not right. Kalau tak betul, salah, you kena cakap tak betul. You kena jujur. Because at the end of the day, okay, nanti you have to answer to God, you know. How much is that gold medal worth, you know. Uh, macam, I give a good, uh, another example myself. Uh, masa US Open, I think two years ago, uh, two years ago, um, I was disqualified. I was qualified bukan sebab apa, sebab uh, at that time on the PWBA tour, uh, kita orang kena drill bola. So every bola kita orang drill, kita orang kena report ada extra hole ke the specs of the ball lah. So uh, that time, dia orang tengah rushing, my ball was the last one drill, tak sempat nak uh, tengok. So orang yang drill tu pun, dia macam uh, careless sikit, tak sempat nak tengok. So when I threw the ball, because uh, I was bowling well, I threw the ball, nak tengok bola macam mana, tukar equipment. Sekali saya perasan dekat bola tu, lepas ada extra hole, tapi tak ada. So, I pun macam, maybe some people would say naive, apalah. I pun macam, ah, I reported that to the official, uh, to my ball rep, and then they all reported the official. But I threw the ball lah, twice. I did not know that until the second time tu pun perasan, eh, dia pegang. Sebab bila kita baling, tak tengok bola. Bila pegang, tengok, eh, alamak, tak ada tak ada extra hole. But in the form, I take the extra hole. So, I self-reported myself. And then I thought it was fine lah because memang kena you kena penalize, you kena macam uh, apa, denda ke apa ke. And then I was caught into the office at the end of the day by our macam commissioner, uh, director tu. She said, oh, you're being disqualified. I was very surprised because I cakap, I bukan nak lari. I cakap, kalau, I cakap, she respected me because I self-reported to them, Americans. It's a big thing because a lot of people were cheat. So like yeah. for me, dia dah macam jadi macam lalu dia cakap, eh, Kenapa saya cakap dah memang salah kan? But I didn't know that I would be disqualified langsung from the tournament. Sekarang, fikir balik macam menyesal ke tak? Menyesal ke tak? Tapi But, lepas tu nangis lah. I felt like dah tengah sedap dengan nak main kan? But that's the thing that you have to see whether it's worth it or not. Like, it's yourself. Macam your characteristics, you know? Kena jujur lah, jujur. Yeah, well done to that, Charlie. Well done. I think it's a real a good model for the young ones and to all athletes and to all of us, yeah? Being who you are. Because I know you cried. Maybe you kata tadi tak tahu yes, regret. I tak cried regret. a lot. But until today, that is your principle of life, kan? Being honest. And you take that forever. Something yeah, that you are be. very proud about. You see? I know at that moment, macam, you know, you cry and you kata, kenapa bodoh sangat ni? But then that <laughs> delusion... Saya nangis satu hari tau. Sampai <laughs> masa Yeah, but that decision actually build who, who you are as a person. It's all about yeah. character building and going yeah. through the journey. And this is what we want kepada para atlet dan semua adik-adik di luar sana, atlet muda lah. Sebab yang paling penting sportsmanship tu sebab dalam dunia sukan ni bukan sampai forever kita main dalam dunia sukan kompetitif kan. For example, life after sports, yeah. you still have to have that good principle and attitude in life. Jadi orang akan tengok you pun suka, akan respect you then um, yeah, forever jadi role model if you have that good attitude. So yang paling important juga kita nak sampaikan yang sportsmanship ni amat penting untuk jaga maruah diri sendiri dan negara. I'm sure Charlene, you have played. You are five time world champion and all. Sportsmanship in terms of responsibility to have good reputation for our beloved country, Malaysia. Yeah, um, actually when in, uh, during my first few years uh, of being in the national team, I was very aggressive, very competitive. So, 
at that time macam banyak orang macam yalah that time yang main so banyak yang lipat dulu lebih you know they, they get very offended but then after a while they know my style then they oh okay okay when she's competing she's like that when she's off the lane she's like that so um once those close to you or once your opponent see you see the side of different sides of you then they will be comfortable with it so don't be afraid uh, kepada semua athlete athlete muda kat sana uh, but macam saya cakap be respectful yeah it's very important to be res- be respectful no matter what you do because um at the end of the day is whether you know uh, when you look yourself in the mirror at, at at night you know you don't see all the gold medals around your neck it's you and yourself you know uh, so you need to be truthful to everything that you do lah uh, i would say uh. yeah definitely because end of the day we are human being we try to be yeah. the best human being we are whether you're an athlete coach ataupun a working person uh, anybody out there and malaysia being someone who is known to have a good apa tu uh, attitude in life being friendly respectful semua yang tu kita kena jagalah uh, sebab betul betul yes um, kita nak tengok bagaimana kita dapat menjadi inspirasi kepada semua terutama sekali kepada adik-adik muda kat luar sana kan and sports is the best actually through sportsmanship so thank you very much halim uh, dengan topik ni so saya rasa today uh, memang topik uh, very interesting to talk about specifically pasal communication tu sebab dalam hidup ni kalau you tak express yourself mana I tahu whether you like me or not whether how you want to work together yeah. whether it's spoken ataupun um, sign language I think it's very important to ex- express ourselves and communicate jadi kita boleh elakkan misunderstanding and in sports important lah sebab we need to listen to the coaches, we need to express ourselves, communicate dengan teammates, strategi apa dan sebagainya. So I think uh, something that our athletes and also support system need to work with one another. Dan media communication, yeah. saya rasa Shalim pun kata yang paling penting adalah uh, be confident of yourself sebab media ni memang terutamalah kat Malaysia ni memang penting untuk kita. Dari segi nak express ataupun promote the sport themselves ataupun uh, atlet itu sendiri memang media adalah uh, sesuatu yang cukup penting untuk menaikkan sukan itu, atlet itu dan juga nama negara juga. Ya. Yeah. And um, macam kita katakan tadi, satu lagi yang kita ingin uh, berkata adalah pendapat kami lah terutama dari segi komunikasi. Kalau boleh Shalin, if you want to say your last word, your message to all tentang komunikasi, what would you want to express yourself to all? Okay, my last word for komunikasi. Um, well, don't be afraid to be vulnerable. Um, that's how we improve, you know. Uh, dan it's very, komunikasi walaupun ada setengah fikir benda remeh-temeh, but it's very important, especially for Sports parents, your support system, your coaches, the athletes themselves, your teammates. It's very important that everybody is on the same page uh, towards the same goal. You know, cara nak capai goal tu mungkin berbeza, tapi hala tuju tu semua sama. Nak menang untuk negara, so kita kena tolak semua uh, apa uh, rintangan-rintangan yang ada untuk mencapai maklumat yang sama. Yeah, thank you Sharon, very much. How about you? For me, pada pendapat saya, komunikasi ni penting kerana itulah dalam sukan terutamanya kita perlu bercakap ataupun berbincang antara satu sama lain so that we understand how we can work together together towards our goal especially athlete dengan coach, dengan parents, dengan sports official sebab tanpa komunikasi yang baik saya rasa memang suka untuk kita menyelaraskan ataupun koordinat our goal towards a success. Uh, especially kalau elite athletes working very hard for Olympics, lagi komunikasi ni pada tahap yang teratas dengan KBS, MSN, dengan ISM, Persatuan Sukan, OCM dan sebagainya. Dan I should say also um, media communication. 
saya harapkan para atlet terutama atlet-atlet muda mengambil serius tentang skill ataupun ability to speak confidently terutama dengan media kerana zaman era sekarang ni dalam sukan uh, memang sports media is very important memang wartawan TV channels radio dan sebagainya memang fokus kepada pembangunan sukan memang mereka akan terus untuk interview atlet jadi apa yang atlet cakap apa yang tak dia tak cakap penampilan diri kesemuanya kesemua tu amat penting. Kalau you are confident and you look good on TV uh, and you speak well, that is also commercial value untuk atlet tu sendiri dan um, the sport itself. So overall, I myself, um, you know, sebagai bekas elite atlet dan juga sekarang TV host personality dan journalist, I would like to say it's very important that athlete and media work together as well because I think media also do their very best to help the athlete and support the athlete. But at the same time, being the athlete myself, I encourage the athlete to be outspoken, uh, to have your own principle in life and also to speak up what you want to speak but respectfully to others as well. So that's what I wanted to say. And uh, Shalim, kita nak uh, honor yes, sikit uh, our Olympian. Eh? Um, because yes. Under Lila Rinong ni, of course, someone that I know very outspoken in what uh, she wants to say, especially to media and all. Tapi dia memang appreciate yeah. all media lah because very important. Dia pun dari dulu kan, from um, young until now. Yeah. I think she's uh, definitely our role model. So tadi Panda Lila pun tengok our show. Thank you very much, Panda Lila, our Olympian and medalist. Yeah. Dia kata hello kat kita lah. Dia kata another interesting yeah. topic to watch and think about, ponder. So we hope that we are doing our very best actually to share with everybody my experience and Charlene's experience yeah. in elite yeah. uh, athlete. Kita nak semua adik-adik dan general public untuk take back lessons ataupun tips that you can use in your athlete's life uh, ataupun your life. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So that's our hope. Yep. Last word, Shalim. Last word. Aduh, dah dua, dah dua last word dah. Yes, last one. Uh, well, last one, I think, uh, just try and improve yourself day to day. Just be the best person you can be uh, or be the, a better person than the day, than you were the day before. Uh, than the day before. Then, uh, oh, and uh, satu lagi, I nak buat shout out. Uh, boleh, Helen? Uh, to my to my boss, uh, Bill Christman, uh, he's actually uh, in the hospital. Dia kena pneumonia semalam, so I hope that he gets well soon. Okay, all the bowling fraternity from Malaysia and across the world, uh, love you for everything that you've done for the sport of champion bowling. So we hope that you will get well soon, Bill, uh, and we send our love and hugs and kisses to you. Okay, uh, selamat berpuasa uh, kepada semua. Selamat uh, menyambut bulan Ramadan yang mulia uh, dan duduk di rumah. Thank you, Charlene, my co-host okay, terbaik co-host saya ni. So, bagi saya kepada uh, peminat sukan dan juga atlet dan juga community sukan di sana, thank you very much uh, for working together to build Malaysian sports, I think it's important for us to cooperate. And communication again, uh, paling penting. Komunikasi antara satu sama lain lah merupakan faktor penting untuk kita menaikkan nama negara dalam sukan. Dan saya ingin mengatakan kepada semua kita uh, mulakan skill ataupun pembelajaran komunikasi dengan lebih baik di depan TV ataupun dengan support system dari muda lagi dari peringkat sekolah dan melalui education kita dan juga atlet-atlet sukma dan saya harap uh, Persatuan Sukan Mandi Sukan Negeri akan beri fokus kepada atlet-atlet muda kita untuk lebih uh, selesa apabila berkomunikasi dengan media maupun dengan coaches, parents dan sebagainya kerana mereka adalah our future champions. They are champion now but they are our future elite elite champion and I think it's very important to invest in them. So until now to viewers, 
please give us feedback what are the topics that uh, you want us to talk about yeah. in our next episode next Wednesday 2 p.m. episode kelima dan kita akan promote dekat Facebook Sharon Wee dan Shalin Zulkifli stay tuned thank you very much yeah. Yeah. yeah salam ramadan and take care bye okay. bye